When I was a child, I had a near drowning experience. I was out with my uh, family. We were in a lake uh, north of New York, and um, there was a platform built for people that you could kind of swim out and get up on the platform and then dive off it. So I had my inner tube on, and my cousin Tom, who was very close in age to me, you know, uh, were playing around, and then he jumped first with his inner tube on and started to paddle away. And they didn't really realize that I couldn't swim. So I got in my little inner tube, I jumped off, and I didn't realize that you were supposed to hold on to it. So I just went right to the bottom like a stone. I opened my eyes, and I saw the most beautiful world I've ever seen. Shafts of light coming down, gorgeous. There were plants moving on the bottom in a beautiful way. Everything was blue and green. And um, I just sat down like a little Buddha right on the bottom. And I just looked around at this world and it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. And so I was sitting there and sitting there and then all of a sudden this big hand comes down, which was my uncle, when he realized I wasn't around. And he dove in and pulled me up. And I was fighting him the whole way. And then I got up on top and then when I realized what happened, I started crying and then my mother and father were freaked out. And uh, I didn't think of that for a long period of time, but I was doing uh, something that we're doing right now. I was doing an interview with someone uh, when I was uh, in my early 20s, uh, going into the 30s. And, uh, and, he, and one guy said, I was explaining something at that experience. He said, he says to me, oh, that's why you use so much water in your work. He said, uh-oh, yeah, well, maybe, yeah, you might be right. <laughs> and that's when I realized, you know, that water is everything for me. That's what I do. You can go back to Paleolithic times and realize that our ancestors at that period um, could see when they, and they, they, they went down to, to take a drink of water in the stream that they were in, that all of a sudden they could see their own reflection. That's the very first time that humanity could see uh, its own reflection. So that kind of idea of self-knowledge is built into the medium of water. Right now what's going on is, of course, when you dream, you don't stand still. I mean, not only does the body move, but the mind moves in very unique ways. And of course, it's the time when you're actually reconstructing the body at sleep. You're actually making new cells and making new things to kind of repair anything that might be broken. That's happening. That's the technical crew, basically. But then our mind is actually putting together things in, that happened during the day, and sometimes dredging up memories that you forgot about way, way back in your past. So all that stuff's happening in the dream world. So the dream world right now, the, the way I've represented it, is actually part of our huge inner world that we have inside our minds. You know, mind and heart connection is the chief way that we communicate. You know, this is the intellect that tells you how what to do this and when to do this. And then this guy here is the one that really feels emotion, feels pain, feels joy. All that stuff's going on. And that's all mediated by water because the body's mostly, uh, you know, as we all know, the body is like 70% water. Is, is usually described the same way as electricity. 
and it's because it's something that flows. There are currents that are flowing in the wires of these cameras right now, and there are currents that are flowing in the stream outside somewhere beyond this building. So all of that kind of movement is the movement of humanity, in my opinion, and I think that's why the whole culture now, the whole global culture, is really interconnected through the internet and through electrical signals up in the air and stuff like that. So where the whole planet is flowing and doing what these people behind me are doing, it's moving, this is a moving image. Um, and that's, that's who we are as a species. We're a moving, moving image. why we call it Mother Earth. And I'm very, very concerned today that we, with our high rises and airplane, airplane travel and stuff, are floating like these people are up in somewhere else. And I think the grounding that, it, that this room provides in this show is absolutely crucial. It's absolutely crucial to make that kind of connections. They are partly dead and partly alive. They are partly old and partly young. They are all the things in the middle that we are capable of, you know, inhabiting. So I think that that's a very kind of important aspect of this space, you know, that these people are, uh, you know, not only just fluid, but they're absorbing what's in front of them. You know, the water is part of their bodies, it's circulating. And that's real, that is real. There is so much information flowing between people right now that we're not a part of. The guy who's talking to you right now is not a part of. Uh, and so there's all this deep, deep, deep information floating around down in the basement. You know, it's just kind of monitoring things so to know that we're okay. 